come back to part two of servicing that big glass reef tank, we're going to start cleaning the algae on the inside of the tank. But the first thing I want to do is shut down the circulation pump uh, because the bulk of that water comes in at the top of the tank. And as soon as you get your arm in there, invariably, if you get too close to the discharge, it's going to start splashing and possibly overflow the edge. So we want to shut down that pump, and that's easily done by unplugging it. And once the water pump is unplugged and the flow is decreased, we can then reach our arm into the aquarium and begin to service the tank. First thing that we want to do is get our cleaning scrub pad and start going around cleaning the inside of the tank, in the front in particular, to try to get rid of most of that algae. Because it's a glass tank, we can use a, a cleaning pad that's a little bit more aggressive. It's important to know what the material your tank is made out of and what you can use to attempt to clean it. As I mentioned, with a glass tank, you can use a more aggressive cleaning pad. If this were an acrylic tank, you would only be able to use a cleaning pad intended for an acrylic aquarium. Otherwise, you could end up scratching the acrylic aquarium. One of the best ways to minimize scratch in the acrylic aquarium is to make sure that the cleaning pad that you're using is free of any granules of gravel or debris. It's these granules or gravels that as you press the material against the acrylic will cause it to scratch. While you can still scratch a glass tank, the risk is much less. And now with the front panel done, I'm gonna go ahead here on the top. And I'd mentioned earlier that these glass tanks seem to have an abundance of salt crust that builds up. And you have to be careful with this because you could knock some of that loose and then it drops inside the tank and of course it could end up landing on top of the coral and that would cause a problem with the coral. But I've noticed these glass tanks, maybe it's uh, because they don't have any real rim, uh, there's always an abundance of salt crust that builds up um, on the rim, whereas an acrylic tank you typically would not have this or I'm sure the same things are occurring in a glass tank in an acrylic tank but because an acrylic tank has a more solid top it doesn't tend to uh, leak out or spray out as much I also got this big glass uh, support here in the center of the tank and this has got a lot of algae that grows on its underside and that blocks light and I don't know if you can see this, but uh, if you create any significant waves inside the tank, it splashes over the edges of the uh, glass tank and runs down the front. And I'm sure this is occurring on the back side as well. But let's go ahead and start cleaning the ends of the tank as well as the back now. Now, I've made kind of a number of negative comments about the glass tank as a reef tank, but the biggest advantage of a glass tank as a reef tank is you can use certain tools that you can be more aggressive at trying to clean the tank. Here we've got a scraper that's got a metallic blade in the end of it. This will help us chip or scrape away some of that coralline algae, those purple dots that are growing out on the back of the tank, the side of the tank, and of course on the front of the tank as well. In a saltwater environment, typically a calcareous algae will begin to grow. In this case, we'll refer to it as a coralline algae. On the front of the tank, it will only block the view into the tank. On the ends or the back of the tank, assuming those are colored ends and colored back, it would be your decision whether to allow that coralline algae to overwhelm or overtake the ends in the back, or if you're going to attempt to keep it continually clean. The owner of this tank has decided that he wants the ends in the back of the tank to be free of those purple dots, so it becomes part of the job of going in there and scraping it off. And as with any other algae, it requires encouragement to grow. 
in this case it's a combination of strong light and calcium or a high calcium level supplemented with a trace element called strontium and as with anything be careful what you wish for because you could get it and what I mean by that is after the encouragement of this coralline algae it grows relatively fast and it may require frequent cleanings just simply so that you can see through the face of the tank and one of the other things you want to do is take your little hand pad and go through and clean like the returns from the sea swirl little areas that you can't get in and clean as well with a uh, pad on a stick Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. And now that we've cleaned most of the inside of the tank, the next step would be to vacuum the gravel at the bottom of the tank. This tank, we are not trying to create a live sand bed. Uh, my feelings at the moment are, that's just where an abundance of debris is gonna get trapped, and that debris is gonna break down, become nutrients, and ultimately create an algae problem for us. So we're actively cleaning the gravel or the sand at the bottom of the tank. Before I get in there and start vacuuming that out and taking the old water out, I want to test the salinity and make sure that we're in proper range uh, so that if I'm a little high, I'll let the homeowner know he's got to dispense more fresh water. And if it's a little on the low side, uh, then we need to add uh, a more salt mix to the tank to try to bring that salinity up. Seems there's a lot of people that are pretty sensitive about how you go about testing the salt level. I just use a simple little needle hydrometer. Um, there's the refractometers, there's the glass vials. This just works simple for me. And regardless of what method you use for testing the salinity, the key is you always want to have consistency and use the same tool. That way, if there's variations, you know it's the result of what you're testing, not the equipment you're using to test it with. One oh two oh. That's where we run this reef tank. That's what he's got it marked at as far as the salinity. So I'm good with that. So the first step in vacuuming the gravel is to shut down the main filter pump. If we don't unplug that, as we take salt water out of the tank, it's going to end up starving the water pump. So again, you want to make sure to turn that off and not run it dry. We've got our five gallon bucket set off to the side of the tank. This is where we'll drain the water that we're siphoning or vacuuming out of the tank into. We're gonna do a 20 gallon water change. And so it'll take a total of four buckets or we'll do this in two sets, 10 gallons for the left side and 10 gallons for the right side. Because this tank is 30 inches deep, we'll go ahead and use the extra large siphon vacuum tube. To vacuum the gravel, we're simply going to create a siphon of water coming out of the tank. On the inlet side of the siphon, we'll have a large diameter tube that we'll call the vacuum tube. If I create that siphon to a lower level, it will continue to flow and draw water out of the tank. And of course, I'm drawing that water down into buckets below. You can see with my left hand that I'm regulating the flow coming out of the system which allows me to determine how much of the gravel I siphon or suck up in the vacuum attachment itself. 
This allows me to extract the light debris out of that gravel at the bottom of the tank. And of course that debris ultimately could cause algae problems within the tank and this way I'm extracting it. If you look carefully here, you can see what appears to be a red patch on the sand or gravel at the bottom of the tank. Red or maroon in color, sometimes green, sometimes deep dark blue. This is all the results of what is called cyanobacteria. It's not an algae at all, but in fact a bacteria. As a matter of fact, it's one of the oldest bacteria in the world. How did it get in your aquarium? most likely the results of the food that you're putting into the tank. But regardless of its input, the fact of the matter is it's feeding on nutrients within the tank. I don't have a real good solution for you other than what I'm attempting to do here, and that is to vacuum it out. And you can see just how dirty that water is that's coming out of uh, the gravel there. So that's debris that we've removed from the tank that will not be creating a potential algae problem for us down the road. So that's 20 gallons out of the tank. You can see we've dropped the water level significantly. And we've cleaned up the gravel quite nicely too. And so that's how we vacuum the gravel or sand in the bottom of the coral reef tank. You'll want to make sure to come on back for part three as you see how we add the water back to the system, clean the protein skimmer outside of the tank, and then move on to our next service. In the meantime, I need to take and uh, empty this water. So make sure to come on back for part three, and we'll see you there.